you actually feel like you're working with a, a film-based uh, you know, type hmm. approach. So what needs to be done? What, what is the future requirements, the dreams of yourself? Uh, well, I think that, that what we're always up against with 3D is there's two of everything. Hmm. There's two lenses, there's two sets of servos for the, for, the, for the lenses, there's two cameras and so on. So we're always trying to make it smaller, lighter, uh, smarter, so that it does more of the 3D functions for us. And I think now that we know that we've got such a good collaborative base, I'm sure that we can continue to, Im to, Im uh, to improve it. The, the camera itself, I don't feel, needs much improvement. <laughs> the actual core camera technology, the, the images that are created by these, I think that so many people are, are welcoming the fact that they now finally can drive a stake through the heart of film. If they choose to, I mean, and, and, and we, we don't have much choice in the 3D business. Yeah. Film, film solutions don't work for 3D. So we've been in the digital world now for 12 years, and we've been saying, hey, come on in, the water's fine. We never look back. But in reality, a lot of, of uh, major cinematographers were very reluctant to give up, like get that film out of their hands. They, they didn't want to do it, and it took, it took a camera like this for a DP like Bob Richardson and some of the other DPs that we've worked with to finally relax and say, okay, I can do all the things. I can do really gutsy lighting. I can let it blow out. I can, I've got the dynamic range I need, and I've got the, uh, you know, I've got the, the color space. I've got the control that I need. Uh, and so, you know, that's going to be a big breakthrough for us in 3D is to get all those other sort of film-based practitioner, practitioners across the double divide, because that's been our problem. It's been two jumps, not one, to go from being a film-based, world-class DP to, to doing a 3D movie has required two jumps. You've got to go digital, and you've got to learn 3D at the, at the same time. And it's been tough to get people across that, uh, across that double jump. This camera is going to help an awful lot with that. Yeah. Although we thought it was going to be tough on Hugo, it actually was fairly easy, you know. Because oh, it's of, easy once they do it, but it's, it's psychological. Yeah. You but, know, it's, but I mean, the camera yeah. did allow us. You know, we weren't we weren't challenged by the camera at all. No. Uh, no. You know, he he was exploring the, the the same direction that he wanted to go, which was good for the film. And I thought that the camera performed well. But I think to your point about the future, I think the the good good thing on the roadmap to the future is we're working together. We're identifying areas where you can share some of those responsibilities of the 3D requirement, whether it be sensor shifting or, or applications where the motor drive might come from mm -hmm. the, the camera itself, the camera body. You know, we're just looking for all of those areas where we can, we can you know, share responsibility in the same goal. And I think whether it's engineering resources, what we've learned from 3D, what you've learned from being a powerful camera manufacturer, I think that really is the exciting part of the future. Um, um, and I think this is, this is the beginning of that future. Thank you. Could you comment on lenses? Uh, where do we stand with lenses on uh, 3D? And what uh, would you like to see there? Well, I think, you know, I'm, uh, obviously you're introducing a, a new lens complement here, mm -hmm. which I'm very excited about because, um, you know, it's, it's starting to head in the direction that we, we need more range and less size, mm. you know. Uh, I mean, that's the bottom line mm. for us is, mm. and size, less size translates to less weight. And this is, this is a fantastic, you know, direction for us because um, we, we, we need to raise the bar on what we can accomplish with the larger sensor cameras. You know, we come from a strong two-thirds mm. inch, uh, you know, accomplishment where, you know, the lenses usually have less the weight and twice the, the range. Mm. And I think, you know, the engineers really got to put their heads down and come up with solutions in the one inch sensor mm. market to, you know, solve those issues. It's all about size and weight for us and no compromise on performance, mm. which I know is not easy mm -hmm. for, for your engineers, but, you know, it, 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 we, we got to sharpen the pencil and we always got to hit that goal to say, can we take the weight out somewhere and not compromise the quality? So I'm very excited about that. Uh, you guys will do it. <laughs> we, have, we have absolute faith. But, but to touch on that, on, on Cirque, we used a, a variety of the Allura lenses, which mm -hmm. was very exciting for me because uh, we, we, we had two of the range sizes and uh, both the uh, 18 to 80 and the um, uh, 45 to 250. And, you know, I was quite 
pleased when I was seeing such a powerful camera being complemented by a great lens introduction that allow us to get, to get some of those shots that you see um, where we couldn't get up close and personal, but we, we could still get that, that essence of what Cirque represents. And there's a unique quality about Cirque. It's one of those few productions that you could get as close as you want to and they'll maintain their presence of quality. Mm -hmm. And it's a fantastic thing to be able to have the right equipment to achieve that capture of those images. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> yeah, it's a pleasure but, working with yeah, you. It's been great. Yeah. Vince, all the best. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>